Thank you. Um, I'm going to start with basic background questions just to get to know you. Uh, I'd like to know where you're from originally. I'm from Gumri, born in Gumri, and um, I was in Gumri until I was about seven and a half years old before we moved to the United States in 1990. That's amazing. So how was life there? How was life in Great memories, um, but you know, one thing that obviously highlights my memory in Gumri is the earthquake in 1988. That That is something I will never forget, obviously, and something that um, to this day I have memories of. But um, after the earthquake, I started school there in Adomik, um, and I was going to school in Yerevan, and I was going to school in Gumri. So I was enrolled in two schools for my first grade and it was a bit challenging obviously <laughs> to, to it was a little difficult otherwise just wonderful memories of the parks and uh, the plays and the theaters I, I did ballet um, as a child there uh, spent a lot of time with my grandparents and family I was the only child for a while so um, just nice wonderful memories that's amazing I mean, that's what you would expect from an army family right So how was the transition from the Armenian you know, community culture to this American lifestyle? Well, when we moved here to the United States, we moved to the South Bay. Um, and so there wasn't a big Armenian population there. So immediately I was thrust into um, the American culture. I, I spoke no English, um, but I have memories of quickly picking up the language. It seems strange to think of this, but I feel like within one month, I was able to really comprehend and speak and engage and understand. You know, children, they pick language up so quickly. Um, so um, unfortunately, as a result of that, I didn't have the opportunity to go to Armenian school. My Russian got rusty because I wasn't using it as often. And my focus became on learning English. So, um that being said, what's your educational background in school? You mean college? Anything. High school, college? Um, well, high school's high school, school, college. I went to the East Coast. I went to Syracuse University. Um, I just always envisioned going to the East Coast for college, so that I ended up there. I didn't know that they had such a great broadcasting program there uh, at Syracuse, the Newhouse School of Communications. So while I was there majoring in international relations, I double majored because I figured, you know, here I am, I'm going to suffer through all of these cold, harsh winters. I might as well leave with a major that the school is really known for. Now looking back, it all makes sense. Uh, this is what I was destined to do. At the time, um, it wasn't really, it, I kind of fell into this position. I kind of fell into this major, but uh, my genuine curiosity for people and things and always being drawn to the action of whatever's happening, um, it all just kind of fell into place, and this is what I ended up doing. Well, my question was going to be what made you really go into this career? So while I, w I, I took a trip to Armenia after college, and during that trip, um, my passion for journalism really ignited. While we were there, um, I was bored just going to restaurants and to people's homes, you know how it is. <laughs> and you kind of have this tainted view of um, being a tourist. You don't really get a sense of what real life is like. So it was nice to grab a camcorder and it, began, it became kind of like a, a hobby, just something to do to pass the time. I went around town interviewing people, um, visited a school and an orphanage and elderly home, different places. And I have all these tapes, boxes of tapes to this day that I say one day I'll make into a documentary. But um, during that time, I think my passion for just connecting with people and telling their stories began to develop. And after that trip is when I decided, you know what, this is something I really would like to do. So when we came back home, I began to intern at a number of places, uh, KFI Radio, ABC TV here locally for Channel 7, um, City Cable in Torrance, where you actually get to be the reporter and go out and do stories. Um, all at once, I went from no internships to three internships. And uh, at that point, I decided I'm going to pursue this and put a tape together, got a job in Idaho Falls, packed my car up and started driving. 
had no idea where I was going or what I was doing, but uh, ended up there. And after two and a half years, moved on to Portland, Oregon. And um, after two years there, ended up back here home in Los Angeles, which has been a blessing to actually work in your own hometown. That's amazing. Wow, okay. That's amazing. So what is it like to be the anchor woman of Los Angeles? I, <laughs> not the anchor woman of Los Angeles, but for Fox 11, uh, Good Day LA, it's, it's been um, an incredible experience. I'm coming up on um, my nine years here back in Los Angeles and nine years with Fox 11 in March. So at time, thank you. Time has really gone quickly. It's amazing to think that um, so many years have passed and uh, they really were wonderful with me. I, I got the opportunity to right away basically get on the anchor desk and uh, step out from being in the field and have such an incredible position and platform to be able to amplify my voice and um, to do what I do. I think of it as a blessing every single day. Not a day goes by where I've taken for granted what I do. I truly drive into my parking spot every morning and before I walk into that building, I say a little prayer and just thank God for the fact that I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, I think it's important to always be humble and remember where you've come from and what you're doing. And in this line of work and really in anything that you do, things can be taken away from you instantly. Nothing is forever and everyone's replaceable. Like that's just how life is. So enjoy what you have while you have it. Never take it for granted and always work hard. I think when you get to a certain position or a level, instead of slowing down or thinking you've you know made it, you should work even harder. You shouldn't slow down. I think I work at 110%, not 100% right now, because um, if you don't, then you run the risk of um, slowing down and losing it all, right? So you have to always work hard and harder when you get to where you wanna be. So what is one of your favorite projects to work on? You know, uh, I was thinking about this. Um, I don't know if I would say my favorite project. I would say something that was um, most important for me happened most recently. Um, with the war in Artsakh, uh, for two and a half months straight, uh, during the war and after the war, I, can, I was very busy trying to put stories together in order to tell the story of what was happening from volunteers to doctors who were going there, to nurses, um, finding people who were there, making a difference, talking about important topics like activism or prisoners of war, or interesting pieces like um, the Halo Trust, which is um, something that this UK-based charity does in order to demine um, or leftover minefields and the explosives that are left over following a war. So these were little, stories that I was able to tell to keep the conversation going and to keep the audience engaged. It took a lot of work. It took a lot of effort. It was very consuming physically, emotionally, mentally. But this experience really reminded me why I got into this line of work. It reignited my passion for journalism. I think sometimes we all fall into this routine in life and it's important to find that passion that keeps us excited, um, looking forward to waking up every morning. And what this uh, experience did was reignite that passion for me to remind me why I do what I do, why I have the position I have, to never lose sight of that. And um, it just was a great reminder. So I think it was one of the most important projects, if you could call it that, um, most ex important experiences happened for me most recently. Audio jungle. To follow up with that question, what is your uh, relationship with the Armenian community in LA? Well, I've been very lucky to have them right away embrace me and welcome me into the community. Um, this is a reminder of how we Armenians uh, are there to support one another and we're doing a ph phenomenal job when it comes to this. 
you know, uh, you know how it is anytime you're watching television and you see an Armenian last name or you're reading something and you get so excited, <laughs> you pause it, you rewind it, you want to tell people about it. Um, that was the reaction I received when I first uh, um, was on the airwaves here in Los Angeles, which I continue to receive the messages of support and um, just overwhelming um, feeling of just, uh, you know, belonging to a community. This was one of the other reasons I came back to Los Angeles. I had opportunities to go to New York City. Um, I had an opportunity to work overseas in Russia for um, ABC Network, for the Moscow Bureau. And those were very tempting opportunities. But the reason I came back was for my family, of course, first and foremost, but also because I wanted to come back to this community. Being such a large community, I wanted to be somewhere where I could make a difference and highlight us uh, as a group of people, uh, which I thankfully have been able to do, and um, just have our voices heard, depending on whatever the topic is. Um, I view it as my duty, and it gives me a great sense of purpose because it's bigger than me. It's something much greater. Um, it's about all of us. Did you ever imagine yourself being where you are today? Yes and no. Um, I didn't quite know this is how it would play out uh, because once again, I, I wasn't sure this is what I wanted to do in the beginning. But I, there came a point where once this was something I wanted to pursue, then yes, 100%, absolutely. And that is the key to success is you have to envision yourself doing what you're doing. You have to have that vision and you have to see yourself doing it because that is how you are going to be driven enough to pursue it. Um, so when I had those cold, snowy, lonely days in Idaho <laughs> where I would pull over on the side of the road and think, how am I going to complete this assignment where I have to shoot my own story, edit my own story, um, and do everything by myself, but, um, and it was difficult, I saw the light at the end of the tunnel, which was really this. Um, I was able to see that. And so when you see it, you believe it, and then you work toward it. Are there any areas in the field you wish to be more involved in? Um, you know, if you'd asked me what it is that I wanted to do in 10 years, I would have said to uh, be an international correspondent or to be on national television. The problem is I want to be here in LA. I don't want to move to New York. I don't want to be in Atlanta <laughs> where they have, uh, you know, CNN as the hub there. Um, I want to be here in LA. Therefore, I have to stay in local news for the most part. Um, and I definitely don't want to be an international correspondent. The world is such a crazy place and when you're young and that seems exciting now that I'm married and have children the last place I want to be is anywhere that's dangerous um, because it's not about me anymore so my goal would be ultimately to stay where I am to do what I'm doing because I love what I'm doing but um, just some things I would like to pursue uh, that I've always found interesting and fascinating perhaps documentary filmmaking um, maybe, you know, get into writing a book of, of some sort. I was telling you the story about how when I went to Armenia, I have all these tapes and footage I uh, accumulated sitting in a box. That is something I'd like to pick up one day and actually look through and see if I could put a piece together. Um, so just pursue different avenues, but to, um, I'm happy where I am and I like the stability. And this is such a competitive industry that if you're able to stay where you are, then that in and of itself is a great accomplishment. <laughs> yeah, exactly, it's a win. Um, besides, you know, um, talking about what's on the media, on the news, is there anything else you've got to do to help the war that was happening in the news of the you know, happening in China? Mm -hmm. And, you know, more than raising awareness on Fox? Um, well, I think what happens now, you have this wonderful 
the good and the bad with social media. Um, I think we all saw that and experienced that recently. It's not just about sharing what's happening on television. You also have an avenue you can pursue with social media where you acquire many followers, um, people who are non-Armenian, people from around the world who um, now you're able to reach. And so you're able to extend that awareness and have it spread into whatever it is that you decide to share with the world on social media. Um, and then you, you establish yourself and you become a part of the community and a member of this community. And you uh, begin to make friends, um, you know, take interest in things, maybe work with different charities and organizations, and you go beyond just sitting on the news and talking about whatever it is you're talking about. So you're just kind of growing. As you're growing in the field, you're growing as a person. And that's one of the things I love about this job and journalism is it really um, opens you up to different experiences, to different people. You meet all kinds of people and you see all kinds of things and you become very much open-minded and your perspective changes. And I think that um, this job has really challenged me and helped me grow into um, who I want to be and who I am. Um, it also just makes you reevaluate things and um, makes you want to be a better version of yourself. So is there anything else, a dream per se, that you're thinking of doing besides your career right now? Um, I mean, I would love to do more with uh, Hayastan at some point. Um, being here is one thing and helping um, in whatever way I can is one thing, but it would be nice to be more involved in Armenia with the youth there. Um, so I don't know what that would be. I don't know what th that looks like, but I think um, Part of our story is that we're scattered all over the world, us Armenians, right? And we work really hard and we're successful in our individual fields. And we help the countries that we're in because this is our home. You know, I'm an Armenian American. I'm very proud of that. But it'd be nice to um, actually go and give back to your homeland physically and to help the future generation really see their full potential. So I don't know what that looks like, but um, you know, I would, very much like to do something at some point. And I think the most important thing for me right now is as a working mother, I realize um, as much as my career is important and I'm very career oriented, um, I have two children. And the most important thing for me is to raise them to be wonderful human beings contributing to society. And um, for me, it's important that they speak Armenian, know about our culture and our history, to integrate them into what it is to be Armenian. And that takes a lot of work because we're in America and they go to American schools. And for the most part, they're speaking English. And so it's become very challenging. It's not easy at all. Um, and I realized that. And so really one of my biggest focuses is to make sure that I stay on top of that. It, that it's very important for me. It, it's something that I think about sometimes and um, I start to panic because I don't want to lose the Armenian identity. Um, I, I don't know what the future will be for my children or their children's children. So for me, I have to fight very hard to make sure that they don't forget who they are, where they come from, and their roots. Um, and it, it's a lot of work. <laughs> I, I would imagine so. How do you feel your work has impacted others and even yourself as well? I think I'm fortunate enough to, um, with the audience I have, to have many people approach me or send me messages saying, you know, thank you for shedding light on this topic. Or when it came to the genocide, when I first came to um, Los Angeles, when I first spoke about it, and I believe it was 2012, 2013, um, our emails were flooded with viewers saying, I didn't even know what this was. I'd never even heard about it. And I realized at that moment that I have a voice and this incredible platform and I need to use it and I'm going to use it. And it was so fulfilling to know that 
that day, that topic, the Armenian Genocide and what we were speaking about had really resonated with so many people and people began looking it up, reading about it, writing about it. And it made me feel like I was making a difference at that moment because I was sharing a part of history that many people hadn't been exposed to. So um, that is just very gratifying. And also, I think it's important to be able to show the younger generation that there are other avenues to pursue aside from being a doctor and lawyer, which is what you're told to be when you grow up in an Armenian household. So, it, and I think the importance of having a representation, right? How important it is not just to be on camera, but to be a producer, an editor, a photographer, a writer, these are, these are parts of media where you're able to have uh, a voice in and an influence in. So whatever it is you decide to do, just think about how it impacts other people and it goes beyond just you having a job or you having a career. Um, it's something bigger than you. And so I always take that into account with whatever it is that I'm doing. How am I representing our community? How am I representing Armenians? One last question, and I think this is pretty important for students like me. What advice would you give to those who are trying to pursue the career that you are in right now? Um, to find your passion, number one, and to work really hard. Because you can't just wait for um, a lucky break and never take the easy way out. Because what seems like the easy way out it's going to take you longer to get to the right place. So always work hard and, and really just focus on yourself. It's easy to get distracted and things can become very competitive, but if you're just focused on being the best version of yourself and perfecting yourself, then you're going to be successful in whatever it is that you end up doing. Thank you for being here again. This Thank you. <laughs> great interview and we got to get some insight on you and your career, amazing career. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully it's just the beginning. I feel like I'm still young and there's a lot to be done. <laughs> so we'll see. Oh, you know, I always say whatever God's will is, I just leave it up to him and wait for it and then uh, take note and follow my path. <laughs>